the history of the English language. This presentation will cover the history of the English language from its very humble beginnings to the events right before the Viking Age. Now, the English language is very much alive. It's constantly changing, sometimes subtly, sometimes unmistakably, and it's become this veritable melting pot of borrowings and change. But like most of human history, the birth, development, and expansion of the English language has been marked by uh, conquest, subjugation, and appalling violence. But to understand um, the, the language within the borders of England itself, we must explore the land as it was before the language began to form. So Britain was most probably occupied by uh, hunter-gatherers like most of Europe, and its land bridge which connected them was destroyed by a tsunami around 6100 BC and Britain became an island. Around 5000 BC, the Proto-Indo-European language, which is important to English and its growth, uh, was developing around Eastern Europe. Uh, there is also uh, the fact that a group of people known as the Belbeaker people occupied Britain and some parts of Western Europe in around 2500 BC, and that they were responsible for monuments like Stonehenge. The Indo-European people uh, who occupied that Eastern European area began to spread out uh, in search of uh, fertile grazing land as well as hunting grounds around 3500 to 2500 BC. So they went into Asia and into Europe. And by 1000 BC, the Indo-European language had split into several major language families. Uh, this includes uh, what we know today, the Hellenic, Germanic, Indo-Iranian, Celtic, Armenian, uh, Balto-Slavic, and so on, as well as languages like Anatolian, Tocharian, and Illyrian, which are now extinct. There were probably other language families as well, but without records, uh, we have no way of knowing. Uh, the spread of Indo-European languages as they are today is shown on this map, and um, it's certainly a vast spread. Uh, along with uh, many other types of languages, but this is the one that's important to the growth of English, which um, has its roots in Germanic. Now, around 800 BC, the Celtic people from around Central Europe began their migrations as well. By around 600 BC, they had arrived in Britain and uh, they remained towards the south and center and did not go north, which was occupied by a people known as the Picts. Uh, even though the Celts dominated Britain, their language, the Celtic language, had very little impact on English as it is today. Some terms uh, like comb, crag, and tor for rock formations, as well as the word brock for a badger, do exist, but they are not commonly used in standard English. The Celtic language, however, did lend itself to place names such as Dover, London, Thames, York, and so on. Uh, this map is uh, an overview of the spread of the Celts. Um, there's uh, the, the expansion was gradual. Uh, it also shows the limited extent of the Roman Empire as it is at that time in 250 BC. <clears throat> now, the Romans actually arrived in Britain around 55 BC with Caesar. However, his conquest was not a success and he had to retreat. It was nearly a hundred years later that under Emperor Claudius, uh, Great Britain was finally subjugated in 43 AD, and it remained the province of Britannia under the Roman Empire for nearly 400 years. But like Celtic, uh, the Latin of this particular time uh, had a very minimal impact on the English language, 
and only a few a small handful actually of loan words that were brought by soldiers and merchants like pound plant candle street wall belt and so on were part of this um, now around 410 AD because of issues with the Goths and Vandals in mainland Europe, the Romans had to withdraw their troops. And by 436 AD, the Celts were completely free of them. And they began to uh, shed whatever small influence the Romans had had on culture and everything else. The Roman Empire's extent is shown on this map, and uh, as can be seen, the northern areas of Britain that were uh, controlled by the Picts were never subjugated, and the empire's extent stopped at Hadrian's Wall. Now we go into uh, the actual beginnings of English itself with uh, the Old English period which uh, was from around 450 A.D. to 1100 A.D. Now around 430 A.D., uh, a Celtic king uh, who was having trouble with uh, Pictish attacks invited uh, a Germanic tribe of people known as the Jutes to help him in exchange for some land. Unfortunately for the Celts, the Jutes realized that they were soft and they were not really capable of defending themselves and they decided on an invasion of Celtic land. Along with another two Germanic tribes called the Angles and the Saxons, they invaded and pushed the Celts into what is today Wales, Scotland, and Ireland. The West Germanic lang languages entered this way, and this is essential because the West Germanic is the branch from which English um, was born. So these Germanic tribes settled into a seven kingdom heptarchy. So Wessex, Essex, and Sussex were occupied by the Saxons, Kent by the Jutes, and East Anglia, Mercia, and Northumbria by the Angles. Now, the Germanic language did have an influence on the naming of several places. Uh, so places with ing endings would imply people off, like reading or worthing. Uh, ending in ham would imply a farm like Nottingham or Birmingham. Uh, the ending stead would imply a site, so a place like Hampstead, and so on. Now, the, the Saxons were the most powerful of the Germanic tribes eventually, and the West Saxons were the most uh, powerful of these, and eventually the West Saxon dialect also became the most dominant of all the dialects. In 597 AD, uh, Pope Gregory sent Augustine with 40 missionaries to bring Christianity to the Anglo-Saxons, who were pagans. Uh, the Celts, to some extent, had uh, been converted to Christianity during earlier times, but the Anglo-Saxons were the people who needed to be converted on this mission. Uh, King Ethelbert of Kent was successfully converted by Augustine, and his influence allowed him to spread the religion as well as literacy throughout uh, England, the name which came from Angloland or the land of Angles. Around 600 AD, the Germanic language was evolving on its own with no contact with the mainland European Germanic languages. So its changes were unique and uh, isolated. Uh, the point when uh, literacy began to spread, the angular runic alphabet, which was uh, used for easy cutting into stone and wood by the Anglo-Saxons, uh, began to be replaced by a rounded Roman alphabet, which was easier to write on parchment with ink. So that was uh, the beginning of a larger change, especially once the change in the alphabets happened. Now, the, the, the Latin that was spoken at that time was mostly isolated to the religious classes. So there certainly was a greater impact on um, words that were related to religious ceremonies or religious events. Um, 
So, and that actually continued into the 11th century, the borrowings of those kinds of words. There was also borrowings of domestic words like fork, spade, and spider, and so on, uh, that would have actually influenced the common people. Now, when it comes to Anglo-Saxon literature, the most popular was, the most famous was the epic poem Beowulf, that was probably written between the 8th century and the 11th century. Uh, what was surprising was that it was written in a mix of the Northumbrian, West Saxon, and Anglian dialects. Uh, there were also um, the, the impact of the changing of words, which was seen with the, the use of uh, kennings or compound metaphors. Uh, for the purpose of being poetic. So the word bone house and even bone cave was used for the human body. <clears throat> a whale road as well as sail road was used for to imply the sea. Uh, battle sweat was used to uh, speak of blood. Uh, iron shower was used to speak of um, the barrage of arrows fired during battle. So that uh, the changing um, aspect of the language in terms of aesthetics had begun to appear. Now, the Old English language itself was quite complex compared to uh, modern English as we speak it today. Uh, it had three genders uh, for nouns, uh, so the male, female, and neuter, as well as for adjectives. Um, it also had classes of strong and weak verbs with various inflections for plurals and um, uh, th those sort of things. Now, because inflections were what implied the position of a word, there was no specific order. So in the way that we would use the subject verb object order, that didn't exist. In any order that the words were placed, the meaning was understood through inflections. Now, while so much of the Anglo-Saxon language was lost to Viking as well as Norman invasions, um, the, the under 1% of words that do exist are very basic, important words, including um, prepositions and auxiliaries. So <clears throat> words like brother, ground, night, day, eyes, mouth, where, family, horse, uh, those were uh, the words that entered the language, but these are clearly very important and commonly used by people all the time. Uh, there were some other changes, including in the 6th century when sk, sk sound words shifted to an sh sound. So skilled became shield, disc became dish, skip became ship, and such. There was also a vowel shift around the 7th century, very similar to the one that occurred in Middle English, where the biggest impact was on the I sound. So it became called the I umlaut or the I mutation, where the pronunciation of the I vowel moved closer to the front of the mouth. Uh, so during this time, and because of this change, rather than stick with the inflectional plurals, um, Odd word pairs were formed, like uh, plurals with mouse, mice, uh, blood, bleed, tooth, teeth, uh, goose, geese, and so on. And that brings us to the end of this presentation. Uh, thank you.